and welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com as we work on the flower power crochet table runner with you today this is good for indoors or outdoors depending on the yarn choice but of course if you use the lily sugar and cream or bernat handicrafter you are good to go let's uh, hear a quick message and then i'll be right back and we'll talk about this pattern in more detail this video has sound alerts added when you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So here we are back on the pattern and you'll notice that there's two flowers side by side with the filler in the middle and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Here's all the colors that they're using just like you see here and you will notice that the, all the instructions are available to you. The wonderful thing about this particular project is that it's versatile. Maybe you don't want a table runner. Maybe you want a curtains or a valance for your kitchen. You can easily just substitute and just change out the sizing of this. You could even make this into a shawl if you really wanted to. So to play today you need a size 5 millimeter size H crochet hook and I'm going to take you to the diagram next and I'm going to show you more about what's happening in this project. So on page number three you're going to notice that there's a flower diagram and these are all the same as each other. The difference is on how they're attaching. So the very first one that you're going to do is going to be the lonely one and you'll go all the way around. You won't attach it to anything because there is nothing to attach to. Then what happens is is that you're going to then build on to this and then where the flowers come around on the final you're going to attach. So you'll notice on one side it's, it looks like it's a chain three which it is and the other side it's chain one slip stitch to this one to join it and then chain one and then come back. So you're joining as you go. So you have to be strategic about your colors when you're thinking about this in the long term. So you're going to notice that you'll have a different color for the interior and then the exterior color is a different color. So you want to be thinking ahead and maybe you want to do it strategically where you do all the middle colors first and then come back with your colors and start joining. Once you get that done you can go and just uh, start attaching. So if you want to put another one here and have it three flowers then going or even four. Maybe you want to make it into a triangle. Uh, you can do that as well. It's a really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow if you're going to do this particular concept. So it's a really neat idea. So what at the end what's going to happen is that you're going to fill in all these spaces. So let me show you another diagram that you see here. So on page number two you'll notice here on the side you're going to put all of your flowers together and they'll be all attached and you'll see that there are spaces in the middle. You're going to come back and fill in those spaces and as you do the final round of all that you're going to join. But exactly where are you going to join? Let me talk a little bit about that too. So I'm back here to page number three. So what's going to happen is that you're going to get all of your flowers done and they're all going to be assembled and you'll notice that there's going to be a gapping space all the way down. So even if you did three wide you'll have the same gap and you just got to create more. So the final revolution of this one here attaches to all the neighbors. So you'll notice that I put the number four, three, four, three, four, three. What does that mean? Well there's actually two different kinds of rounds as you go around. So in the one in this section here it'll say chain four and then slip stitch to attach and then chain four and come back. So you notice where it is okay and then this one here it's going to say chain three slip stitch and chain three come back. So I just wanted to highlight to you that when you're reaching across this distance and this distance okay there's it's fours and when you're going into these ones here it's threes. Now you're going to notice here that it looks like it's oblong kind of idea or oval but the reality is once it gets done this is going to be a complete kind of a square idea. But these are further apart from each other than the ones in the three. So that's why there is a difference at that particular point. So let me show you a little bit of a sample that I'm making and then I'm going to show you how to do this as well. So here's a mini example that I'm running today and it's actually kind of a neat idea and it's really quite simple. So no matter how you turn it it's all going to look the same. So you'll notice that when you're attaching these when you're going in the up down that there's going to be two joints here and but when you attach to the either side it's only going to be one. And the reason for it that there's only six sides. So it'll be attached here. This one if you added another one will be attached over here and if you put one on top those two would be attaching to the top. So you want to be strategic about it and the thing you got to watch for is the right side and the wrong side. So this is the right side of the project because the worst thing you could do is attach one and then it's upside down on the other side because it looks slightly different. I don't know if you can tell that in the camera but you'll be able to notice after you're done and then you'll kind of regret it. So you want to keep an eye on your right side and your wrong side. So what you're gonna, I'm going to do for you today is that I'm going to show you how to do one and then we're, I'm going to just uh, instruct you because the first one you do doesn't have anything to attach to but then every time you build the next one it's got to 
attach somewhere. So you have to determine whether you're gonna go straight across or whether you're gonna come straight down. So in this case when I fill this in I'm gonna not only attach here but I'm also gonna attach up here at the same time. So you just wanna be very conscientious to where everything is and uh, you'll notice that it all is gonna come together really quite nicely when we go to do this. So you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and we're gonna start off with the center. So if I were you and you were me, do all your centers first of all the different colors and then come back and then do all these colors and then you can strategically uh, put those together as well. If you would like to change the colors more, of course that's an option you can do as well. So let's grab our yarn and let's begin in the middle. So let's begin and we're gonna create a slip knot and begin our project. And we're gonna insert our hook and you want to chain a total of two. So go one and two. And in the first chain, okay, over here, right when you started, you want to put in a total of 12 single crochets. Now listen, this is gonna be really tight when it goes in, so you wanna be relaxed at this point. So going into the first chain, and you're going to single crochet a total of 12 times. So one, and two, and three, and four, and notice I'm going up over top of the string so I can bury it. So that was four. This is gonna be five. This is six, seven, eight. And I'm running out of space. Do you see that? So you just wanna yank on it and pull it over. So that was eight and nine. And I'm gonna let that straggler fall out of the way. It's buried enough. This is 10. I got two more to go so just keep on pulling it over. 11 and 12 and it will make sense in a bit. So if you can't see the first one just count back from the top here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and there is the 12th right there and that's the 12th one and you wanna slip stitch it. So just take your time, get it in there and pull through and through, through and through just like that. So there's your starting circle. So now this straggler that you were bearing you can now get rid of it and it's out of your way permanently. Nothing to sew in. Perfect. Just the way you like it. And let's move on to round number two. So in round number two what we're going to do is create some spokes and we need a total of six of them. It's a six sided flower. So we want to chain a total of six. So let's just do for three first. So one, two, three. This is one spoke, okay, of the six. Now chain another three. One, two, three. And this is a space. So it's kind of bending over like so. Skip the next stitch and go into the next one with a double crochet. See, so now you kinda got a spoke coming up and the space. It's hard to tell right now but it will, it will be like that. So chain three, one, two, three. Skip one stitch back down here and go to the next for a double crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three. Skip the next stitch and go to the second one over and double crochet. So even though it's tight down here at the bottom, this what I'm about to doing right now is gonna make everything kind of relax and pull out. So chain three, one, two, three, skip one stitch and double crochet and then we'll chain three, one, two, three, skip one stitch and double crochet in the next and now you have a total of six of your spokes. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So to finish that off you're gonna chain three, one, two, three and I want you to count the third stitch up here. So one, two, and three and just slip stitch into there and pull through and through. And this color is technically done so I'm gonna finish this off. Just grab my scissors and cut and pull it through that loop. And what I wanna do is that the next layer is gonna go right over, over top of the string. So just weave it in this chain, okay, right into the chain itself and it's gonna get stuck there. So just go in this chain area, cross over and do the next chain area and then it's really in. So again, no, nothing to sew in. This will speed you up. Okay, and once you get that in, just safely just trim it and let's move on to our next color. So let's begin our next color. We're gonna create a slip knot just as extra security. And we're going to choose any chain three space. It doesn't matter which one you go into. 
the pattern it shows you where you should go into but that's up to you it doesn't really matter and I want you to just join it with the slip stitch like so. Now use this straggler and just hold it down on top of the line and we're gonna bury that right in the very beginning. So we're gonna chain up three, one, two, three and that counts as a double crochet and then in this chain three space I want you to double crochet a total of four more times. So one and two, three and four. So with the chaining of three that you did in the beginning you should have a total of five. So one, two, three, four, five. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and come into the next chain three space and do five double crochets. So what I want you to do is repeat that same idea going all the way around. I'm gonna leave that for you and I'll meet you at the end of this revolution and uh, it's really quite an easy project to be able to handle in order to do this. So this is the second last round. So you have five in there so you're gonna chain a total of four, one, two, three and four and then coming in and do another five in the next chain three, sp three space. So I'll see you at the end of this revolution and just hang on one second. So I'm finishing the revolution off and there will be five double crochets in the final space which makes sense right? And so you'll have what appears to be hexa a hexagon really. So let's uh, finish that off. So to finish this off remember you still have to do your chaining of four. So one, two, three and four and I want you just to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and pull across. So it now looks like a, hexa a hexagonal so that the stitch that you were covering over top of this straggler is now gonna be cut. Get that out of the way and now you have a hexagon. So we're just gonna do one more revolution and this revolution will determine whether you're gonna go all the way around uh, for your very first one but any if it's not your first one you need to start attaching to a neighbor and I'll cover both in the next section. Okay so let's begin the final revolution. Now I'm gonna get you started just showing you how it's done and then I'm gonna show you how to join. So if it's your very first one you have to go all the way around without joining anyway. So let's uh, begin. We are going to slip stitch over to the middle one of the group of five. Okay right now we're currently in the first one so we have to slip stitch over two in order to get there. So just one just going right in the stitches and just pull through and through. And this is where we're going to start. So we're in the middle one of the group of five. So now I want you to chain one and I want you to slip stitch or I want you to put one single crochet into the same stitch. So now we're going to then just reach over to the first chain four space. So we're gonna chain one first and we're gonna double crochet into that chain four space. And then chain one and then double crochet again. And then chain one and double crochet again. So one side of this corner is gonna have double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now what we need to do is that we're going to chain three. So this is the top corner. So one, two and three and coming back into that same space if you need to move things just do it and just double crochet, chain one, double crochet again, chain one and double crochet again and then finish it off with the chain one and then come to the middle one of the group of five and single crochet. So you're gonna do that all the way around as if it's not attached to anything and this is the very first one but if you're going to attach to a neighbor this is when you're gonna start doing so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, if it's your very first one go all the way around and finish it off completely and then restart another one and if it's not then we're gonna just take your, your one to about to join and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So here's my sample here. So notice that on one side when it comes ac straight across it's only one join here but when it's coming up or down it's gonna be two joins. So when I put this one in it's gonna join only once to this one and it's gonna be joining twice to this one. So it doesn't matter which ones join here when you go but I would recommend that you at least get the first side done. So we've already kind of done uh, the first side but it's just gonna continue. So if you're continuing along you're just gonna chain one and then reach over to the chain four and you're going to double crochet, chain one, double crochet again, chain one and double crochet one more time. So this time we want to join it to the neighbor. So instead of doing what we were doing before with uh, chain three in the middle you're gonna chain one and then you're gonna grab the one that you need to join, come up underneath, underneath and pull through 
the yarn and through. That's your slip stitch and then chain one. So instead of chaining three, you chain one, slip stitch and then chain one and that is equivalent to doing it three times. And now you come back to the one that we're playing with and you're gonna finish this corner off. So you're gonna double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet and then chain one and then come to the middle. So now you just successfully just joined it as you see. So the next one, here's the corner, it's gonna attach up here. So let's begin to do that too. So we're gonna chain one to start and then come right to the corner. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, so now if there's not joining anything, you're just gonna do a chain three but if you're joining, it's gonna be chain one, come to the space that's on the other one, come up from the bottom, pull through, and then chain one and then come back to the one you were working on. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet, chain one and then slip stitch to the middle one of the group of five. So now you're joined in two different areas here just like you see. Now we're gonna join it one more time. So chain one to start, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Then chain one coming up from the bottom just like so pull through, chain one and then come back down in. And continuing to do that, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet, chain one and then single crochet to the middle one. So now if you were joining on anything else at this point, so if you had another group over here, you could join at the same time if you wanted to. But if there's nothing more to join, you're just gonna go around as normal like you did in the very beginning because there's nothing to go. So you can see that you can add on more layers. So you could have three and you can have a lot of great times with this. So let's finish off our, our uh, flower just like you normally would. So again, there's no join here. So you chain up one. So double crochet and chain one double crochet, chain one, double crochet. There's nothing to join so chain three and then double crochet back in, chain one, double crochet again, chain one and double crochet and then chain one and then come to the group of the middle for a single crochet. So please do that all the way around and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna finish this off and then I'm gonna cover on how to fill in the middle just like so. So to finish off this and then I just chained one and then I'm just going to join it to the first single crochet that I did. Now I highly recommend this is the last one there is. There's nothing that you can do to bury this any further. So just cut your yarn and pull through and then I want you to throw this through a darning needle next. So just off camera I got one here ready for me and just pull it through. Uh, sorry pull, uh, push it through the needle. So if you go in and out of your project three times you can hide it in. So just bearing it underneath, try not to impede the outside edge. Just bearing it, gliding it through some yarn strands. Okay and then just stay underneath so you don't in, in fact the, or affect the edge and then pull through and then going back in the other direction for two and back in the other direction for three. And then this is a great way to get rid of this as well. This tail without ever having it falling out ever again. So now you can see that you have your, your ideas here and remember what I said to you that in the picture it looks like this is more oblong but it's actually the same. So now I'm gonna show you how to finish off this middle right now. So let's finish off doing the middle here. We're gonna need a new yarn color. You can choose any color you wish. It's pretty subjective to you. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now remember in my diagram that I did in the very beginning. So whenever you're attaching to the, let's just say 12, um, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock, it's always gonna be chaining a 4 because it's a further distance than these here in the, the mid, in the, in the mid way. So we're going to be attaching our, our these particular um, square to eight different sections. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So just remember at 12, six, three and nine is that it's a further distance out. So let's uh, just grab our yarn and I'm gonna zoom in the camera and get you started on this and then we'll come back and show you how to attach it in the last round. 
So let's begin our first. We're just gonna start off with a slip knot. You can use any color that you wish. It is a solid color just for your convenience and I'd recommend it anyway. There's not a lot to this particular spot of the project. You're going to chain a total of two. So one and two and in the first chain I want you to insert your needle or hook in and I want you to single crochet four times. So one and two coming back in three, look how I'm going over top of the straggler to bury it and four. So only four times in and it's gonna be a nice tight circle and if you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three and four and you'll be able to see that here. So you just gotta take your time. Always harder when there's just a little bit of in your hands versus when the project gets a little bit bigger. It's like an afghan starting for the first time. So you're just slip stitching over and then just turn over and get rid of that straggler that you had just buried in and then you're good to go. So let's then move up to the next round. Okay, so let's turn it back to the beginning and let's uh, start up our next round. So there's actually only a total of three rounds on this whole thing. So this is round number two. So you're going to total, uh, do a total chain count now of four. So one, two, three and four and you're going to do a cluster right in the same one that it's doing the joining. To do that you're going to wrap the hook twice and you're going to go into the same one that you did the join and insert in and pull through. Now you have five, four loops on the hook. Just yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and hold it so that you see that this is a stitch and this is a stitch. And I want you to do that two more times. So just wrap the hook again twice, same stitch, in, pull through. So just pull through two and two and hold it. So now you can see you got a total of three. You want to have what appears to be four of those. So just yarning over twice again, same stitch, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So now you have what appears to be four. So one, two, three, four. So now I want you to yarn over, pull through all of them here. Now we're gonna do a total account of, of chaining of eight. So let's just do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So now we're gonna do this exact same thing again but in the next one. So there's only four stitches in this whole thing. So just yarning over twice. Because it's a long chain it gets a little dicey but it's not a deal breaker. And coming into the next one so I've yarned over twice, pull it, pushing it in, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. So there's one of a, of a group of four. Yarn over twice again, same stitch, pull through two and two and hold. Do it again, yarn twice, pull through two and two and hold and do it one more time. So now you have the group of four all over again. So now yarn over, over and pull through all of it and then chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And now just go into the next stitch. So just yarning over twice and doing the same thing. So going in, pull through, pull through two and hold and do it again. And keep on doing it until you get that group of four going on. Once you get your four in there, yarning over and pulling it through all of it. And then what I want you to do is chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight and do that once again and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So let's go back in for the final one. This is the fourth one coming in to the next stitch. Pull through two and two and hold. Keep on doing that. So you can see that these don't take long to make especially when you're using trebles for your clusters. And do it one more time so you get that group of four. And there it is and pull through all of it. But to finish it you're missing that final chain eight. So do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And now I want you to come in and just join it to the top of the first one over here. So this is what it looks like at this point. And now we're going to move on. In the next round we're going to attach as we go. 
So let's begin our join. You need to pay attention to here to the most of this particular tutorial. You're gonna notice that it looks like this. Okay, so you want to make sure that this here is going in the vertical direction. So if it's turning like this, it does, it's not gonna work for you the way that this pattern's written. So make sure that when you're paying attention that it's going straight up, up and down and like this, like a cross. So to begin, you're going to slip stitch into the first chain eight space. So slip stitch in. So remember what I talked about that there's going to be a chaining of three and then back and then chaining of four and then back. So when we go to start what we're going to do is that we're gonna start here and go immediately here and then back and then we're gonna come here and then back. Okay, so when we ever we go here to the 12, 6, 3 or 9 it's always gonna be chaining of uh, four and these spots here is gonna be chaining of three. So to begin, once we've slip stitched in there, we're gonna chain three. So one, two, and three. And you wanna come immediately to the middle one of the, of the, of the middle right here. And just come up from the underside. And just yarning over, pulling through as a slip stitch. And then chain three. So one, two, and three. And then come back to that same space. Okay, that same chaining. And single crochet around that. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. So now we're going to then attach over here. So to get there first we need to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And we want to go right where the two are joining here and come up from the underside and pull through and through. And then chaining four to return. So if you go chain three out and back make sure they're both chaining threes. If you're chaining four and then back it's both chaining a four. So let's go four back. So one, two, three, and four. And return but when you return you're coming back to the other chain eight space on the other side of that middle section. So now you're back in the middle here. Okay. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, and, th and three just like you see and then just attach to the middle section again from the bottom up. Pull through as a slip stitch and then chain three to return. So one, two, three. So turn your project if you need to and then come back into that same spot. So here's the thing to remember. Whenever you're chaining a three you're always returning to the same spot and when you're chaining a four you're always returning to the next spot over here. So let's do the next section here. It's gonna chain four. So one, two, three, and four. This one here is straight. This one. So it's a further away. And then chain four to return. So one, two, three, and four. And this time come on the opposite side of this that you see here. So come to this side. Okay, and now chain three. One, two, three, come to the middle section. That is next. And then return with chaining three. One, two, three, and return back to the same section. So you can see it's joining. So we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Come to this middle over here. And then return one, two, three and four. That is a chain four so you're coming to the opposite side. So jump over, single crochet in and then chain three. So one, two, three. Grab the next one in the middle. One, two, three. Return to the same space. So you can see right what we have so far. So we just have this last one to attach to. So that's a chaining of four. One, two, three, and four. Go all the way up there. Pull through and chain four to return. So one, two, three, and four. Now you've already single crocheted into this first one. So you're going to single crochet into the one that exists is already, oh sorry, you're gonna slip stitch into the one that already exists. Just like that. So now you're done. That's it. So what you have to do is you have to work all the way down your particular 
table runner or if you're making curtains just do the same thing of filling in the space. So you're going to want to make sure that you get rid of this. Now there's tips on the Crochet Crowd website on how to make cotton yarn last a long time with washing that you can set the co uh, colors permanently using some salt water and uh, some vinegar and I have an article written about that if you'd like to read on that. So after you've done this project you can soak it in the solution for about 30 minutes. Lock in those colors and if you ever have to wash it then you don't have to worry about the colors bleeding at all so that you can keep the vibrant nature of this yarn. So if you go in and out three times like I showed you on the outside and just get rid of this you have this project completely done. So this is how you do a table runner and with the cotton yarn it looks really quite uh, stunning actually to be honest with you and whether it's for outdoors or indoors you can see you could just add on more quite easily because these are very versatile right in the center. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. Join me next time as we have more free patterns and ideas coming to you real soon. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.